we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of blessings, the promise of dawn may it become mine. From this time, may we live the day peacefully. If we worry, help us not to ruin ourselves. Because of my thoughts, my thoughts, worrying and being anxious, may we not be ruined. But to entrust everything and to be at peace and to be victorious. Even though there are so many problems in front of us, we believe that it's Almighty Father who has done it and to entrust and to receive solutions and your help. To those who are weak, you said you will surely give them strength. Because I act like I'm smart and better, help me not to be ruined. But to entrust everything to Christ who is my guide. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please follow after me. Sheep. So he says he'll help at dawn. There are people who receive and there are people who don't. Even though he said he'll help the same for everyone, but as you live, there are people who receive and there are people who don't. So what's the difference? God says, your heart is the most important thing. Your thoughts, the way you have your heart, he knows them all. Psalms 139 verse 1. Why does he emphasize this so much? Because he knows your heart. If you've done things properly, then he'll help you. Even if you're a little bit crooked, he can't help you. That's what it's saying. So at dawn, who is it that helps? Let's find Psalms chapter 46 verse 5. It seems like you know this, but you don't. God says he'll help. That's right, but it's wrong. You've answered God helps, and in the Bible it says God helps. If this word only worked on its own, then you wouldn't need the rest of the Bible. But even if you take away one verse from the Bible, there's no salvation. So it's saying you have to put something else in this, add something else. It doesn't work alone, but you don't do this. From the electrical power station for the electricity to come to our church, the electricity, we can say, yes, the electricity comes from the power station, but it doesn't work. In the middle, every 50 meters, 100 meters, you need to have the poles. You need to have the lines connecting. That's how it comes through. But you don't have this. So God helps, but it doesn't work. God helping, that is the fundamental word. But for it to work for me, you need those connections. So who doesn't know that there's food at a restaurant? You know, and yet people starve. Because if you don't get to eat it, then you starve. But if you eat it as mine and you digest it, then you live. So you end up meditating on God's word. You continue to eat three times a day. So that's, you know, at, at a certain time. But breathing, going in and out, if this isn't continuous, then you'll die. And yet, pe not many people are interested in breathing. But when you go to a place where someone's about to die, you can see how hard, difficult breathing is. You see it with your eyes. If it's your parents or your loving sibling or, a, you know, just a moment ago they were breathing well, but just before they depart they can't breathe. And you see them. Um, you know, it's how difficult it is. So breathing seems to be easy, but the moment of death, that's the hardest thing that gets cut off. So God and me, our relationship is deeper than breathing. So, you know, normally you don't even know if it's been cut off or not. So something that important, even though it's been cut off, we don't know. But from this dawn, let, we have to receive help. Well, Pastor, you do this every dawn. You say you have to surely do this or you have to surely do that. Well, so I'm saying these are the poles you need to set up from the power station to your house. And then you also need to set up the lines. And before we used to call it a fuse box. What do they call it now? You know where those switches are. So we used to 
so we used to call it a fuse box and do you call it a switch a circuit breaker I see I've seen those at the train lines but you need that without that if it gets too much there'll be a fire or you know the electricity will be cut off so just like you need all those things so you need the power station you need the house you need all those things in between and that's why every dawn I say you do this and then you do that so all those things you have to keep making them mine then it would work well pastor what is it that you're doing well out of the things that I've given you at the beginning you need to build the power station then you need to set up your house then you need those poles and lines and then those people who aren't doing well I look at you all and I see if there's something that you're all not doing so how do I know you need to have counsel to the man of understanding is counsel given so God gives it so what God gives that counsel that's what I have to preach that's a sermon but not what I make me me I I do it I do it 100% you'll be ruined if you're ruining yourself how can you make others do well 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 Psalms chapter 46 verse 5 let's read it together God is in the midst of her she will not be moved God will help her when morning dawns amen so is it God helping at dawn that comes first or God in the midst of her? So where God is, that comes first. God has to be there. God has to be with me for him to help me. Is this Amen? So when you look at one of the Bible verses, sometimes pastor says this. So sometimes I'll say what's, what's in the back first. But that doesn't become the main text. You have to first make God in the midst first. Then God will help. If if that order isn't right, then it becomes nothing. You know, God, he doesn't know less than us. He, for him to make this order. The duty of man is to fear Jehovah. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. If you have... If you fear, then you receive wisdom. But when you don't know this, it's like, why do you have to fear? Well, if you have wisdom, if you are able to receive wisdom, then you have knowledge, prudence, and understanding. So once you have wisdom, then you can obey. It's not to obey and then have wisdom. So always, God's word, first of all, he has to be with me. So even though you're not educated, even though you don't have things, even though Korea doesn't have resources, it's still, it's still his, his holy uh, dwelling place. So it's Almighty God who gives us help. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. So to make this mine, you have to at least write it up on the wall. You know, school education, it's three years, three years, together it's six years and then you've got you've got four years at universities so just like jesus with his disciples of three and a half years so that's how our actions change jesus himself did it with his disciples that's how so when you hear god's word if you just leave it then it just disappears but if you stick it up on the wall and you do it exactly when you hear the word that you've heard and you meditate after three and a half years You've changed because the word is God. Because he's Jesus Christ. So just like the disciples followed Jesus for three and a half years and they changed, you too have to look at it for three and a half years. So those people at the three, four theological college, those who've come to Busan First Church, you think that you've come, but you haven't just come. God, he wants to use you in a precious way to fulfill his will, John chapter 6. In other words, to be used as a royal secret agent. That's why you've been called. So how precious you are. So, you know, I have to make sure you do well. But if I'm lazy or if I don't give you these mysteries, this know-how, then I will suffer and my children will suffer. So just like God loves you, I have to give you everything to the point of death. 
Whatever God tells me to do, I have to obey. So yesterday, because I was so weary, my wife said, Pastor, you know, I'll just do praise. Why don't you rest? So it's at those moments you have to depend on the help at dawn, whether it be in the afternoon or Sunday or even if it's 3, 4. For me to completely depend to receive guidance from Christ. But you don't do this. That's the problem. So God helps. But it's not that God helps. That doesn't come first. It's when God is in the midst of her that he will help you. So God being with you, that comes first. So if God wants, if you want God to be with you, where is God? Let's find 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. He is in Christ. So it seems simple. You seem like you're always doing it. But when you're told to do it, you, you do something else. When you make rice, yes, you need rice and you need water and you need a rice cooker. You need the, the heat. But if you just put the rice in and then you turn on the switch, it will burn. And then you put the water in after. That If that order isn't right or if the amount of water you put in is wrong, it's not going to work. So it has to be right. But even more so, the, the word is even more detailed, uh, precise. So why is it God that you, uh, why is it that God, so why is it, why is it, Pastor, that you talk about in that one Bible verse where God helps at dawn, sometimes it's about the city, sometimes it's about the help, sometimes it's about God. All of the Bible has been reduced. John chapter 21, verse 25. So this one Bible verse, there is so much in there. People talk about how there's so many books of philosophy. This one Bible verse is unlimited. So how much is in here? Even though all of the universe was were bookshelves, you couldn't put all of his word in. So that's... There's, so what does that mean? So the way to rule over the, the world and control of it is all inside of here. That's Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. So you say, oh, this book, it's just one book. No. Almighty God, for you, he has reduced this and reduced this. When you unravel it, that's how much there is. So this lacking servant, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm just doing the errand of God. But... For 15 years, even though I've proclaimed this, I haven't even done one millionth of what is here. And when you follow this, it's right. We're just going towards wisdom. So there are these people who do forced repentance and they say, oh, that's all there is, and they depart. Those people are hasty. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5, that person is useless. They're a servant of, of the devil. So they don't have patience. You know, Christ is patience. If you don't have patience, you haven't done four-step repentance. If you live by your thoughts, you have your own personality. But in Christ, you become one. Exactly like Almighty God who where everything works out. So you don't need to discuss. You don't need to have these meetings. If your heart is one, there are no worries. It's when you're double-minded that you're like, should I do this or should I do that? If you become one, there are no worries. So this is the amazing thing that happens in Christ. Romans chapter 15, verse 5 to 6. That's what's recorded in Romans chapter 15, verse 5 to 6. So if you haven't done it, you don't know. If you eat, then your eyes become brightened. But if you don't eat, you don't know this. You actually have to eat. So God's word... Those who say it by theories, then it's all a lie. You know, you haven't eaten sugar or honey and you're saying it's sweet because you've just heard about it. But if you eat too much, then your throat burns. You know, you feel like you're going to explode inside. But those people who have eaten it know God's word is experience. God who helps at dawn, 
He helps those who he is with. Is this our man? So where is God for him to be with you? Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Amen. So he's in Christ. So the sins haven't come to us, but have, have been put on him. And so God is in Christ. So we have to go in Christ. To go in Christ, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, let's find that. It's a mystery. The mystery of Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Let's find that and read it. When you re- After you read that, to go in Christ, you realize you have to do four step repentance. So we don't have time. So, so let's read. To whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Those people who have no reason to live, who have no hope, who are discouraged. For you to live, there's nothing but this mystery of Christ. Four-step repentance. If you have, to, if you do this, you'll live. So starting from me, I have to do well to give it to others. But what's regretful is that I'm not doing well. So who does God help at dawn? Those who he is with. That's the order. So where is God? In Christ. In four-step repentance. So what is four-step repentance? It's the mystery of Christ where Christ comes inside of us. So if Christ is in me, this mystery is what makes me live. It's hope. So things that weren't doing well, do well. Your health, your finances, everything. That is hope. So God's help. So the one who helps at dawn, if you're in Christ, if you do forced step repentance, he helps you. So we don't have time to read Nehemiah chapter 9. So you, after you do a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, it's not me, but he comes inside of me because my because my inside becomes clean. So Christ enters. When he comes inside of me, who is Christ? Let's find Matthew chapter 23, verse 10. This is where you don't acknowledge him. You just say Christ is... It just deals with the problem of my sin, that it's for repentance. And after that, you're like, he has nothing to do with me. So, because that's your heart, he does according to your heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he does according to your heart. So, once, uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. So, once he comes inside of you, he is your guide. That guide, there is only one, which is Christ. So the whole day you need to be guided by him. If you go to, if you go on travels, uh, you know, you end up just following the guide that's holding the flag when you're touring. So some people are like, we're so busy looking at the flag, we don't even see what was around us. But if we look at that flag, we don't have that regret. We have to look at that flag. Christ is our guide. We have to only depend on him. Otherwise, we're going to lose our way. So when you go out, so God helps at dawn, you do force your repentance. But when there's a problem, you just discard Christ, the guide, and you just do things by your strength. And that all becomes problems. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. And you're like, God says he helps at dawn. He hasn't helped at all. Well, what help does he give you? Well, it's your guide. So whatever happens, whether it's small or big, we have to discuss with our guide. We have to entrust to him. We have to entrust. We have to entrust because you're not doing this. This is why it's not working. Today, from today, let's entrust, whether it be small things or big things. We have to entrust to our guide. And that's when the guides will be like, oh, yes, you're you're acknowledging me. So who is in Christ? Well, then, then you'll be able to go up. But instead of giving it to your guide, you know, instead of the accounts, you end up looking, going to the hospital. Or So God says, I know your thoughts. I know that you're not entrusting and you're doing things by your strength. So, so you keep getting difficulties. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. You continue to get trials and fall into snares and you fall and you and your children don't do well. And then you're like, oh, it doesn't work if I go to dawn. Why? Why doesn't it work? 
If I live, then you'll be, then I'll be ruined. I don't have time to be witnessing about that. But if you do things by my strength, then you only have trials. You'll be ruined, and you fall. You fall into into death and destruction, and you depart. So. After we pray, whether it's small or big, keep entrusting, Father. Oh, there's this small rock in front of me. The, in all things, in trust. So let's read what we found first. Do not be called leaders, for one is your leader, that is Christ. Amen. So who is your guide? Is it two or one? It's just one. My thoughts, 100% you'll be ruined. You look at people who are ruined. They've studied a bit. They think they're so smart. But worldly wisdom and knowledge, even if you have 10,000 doctorates, they're dog doctorates. It's the wisdom of the beasts that are perishing. So you will be ruined. Everything that you do is ruined. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. Because you trust that, that's why you're ruined. You have to lay them all down. They're all just for evangelism. But to completely be weak, to the weak, strength is given. What is that strength? It's knowledge. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. It's when you are weary, when that you're giving strength. When, when you're weak, you're given strength, that knowledge. It's because you don't have knowledge that you're ruined. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. So, You know, the word that you've been given, to put it up on your wall and to keep eating it, that's when workings happen. So whether it be small things or big things, is Christ two or one? There's only one Christ. It's not God, it's not the Holy Spirit or Jesus, it's not me, it's not some someone with a doctorate or some or someone to seek counseling. No, we have to entrust to Christ. Christ is our guide and he will take responsibility. So, you know, it's up to Christ whether he receives permission or not from God. But all I have to do, if I'm seeking payment, is to seek out the, the person in charge of payments. We just have to, we just have to um, entrust to Christ. So with forced at repentance, Christ, he gives us faith and he makes us meet God, but he is our guide. So there's no two guides, it's just one. A fake church doesn't have a guide. They don't have forced at repentance, so they don't have a guide. So you can't meet God, you can't be guided, so you have to live your own life, and so you're ruined. Let's find Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. So God says, In all things, in trust. How much is it? It's free. Why is it that you don't entrust? And when I see how you sit there suffering, Why is it that you're suffering when you should be doing well? Oh, pastor, why don't you drag me? No, it's not me that drags you. It's Christ who guides you. So if you have Christ, you know, do you need to pay a bus fee or does he hinder you? No, he, there's nothing he hinders you. He never asks you to feed him. Why is it someone so good? even if you don't ask for help he's waiting beside you he's like all you have to do is entrust to me why aren't you entrusting but you're like leave me alone Christ I finish with false dead repentance you're not my guide but still even though you're foolish Christ he still comes and he's like entrust to me every time you have a problem he tells you to entrust but you don't Who here is better than Christ? We need to entrust. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 10. So if you entrust, you have these thanksgivings. If he's next to you and he keeps helping you, in this, even whether it be little things, even if you're like a child, you can even ask him to wipe you after you go to the toilet. If you're not thankful, about this, then you're someone who hasn't entrusted. If you don't have thanksgiving, you haven't entrusted. If you do entrust, then you have thanksgiving. If you eat, 
Then you go to the toilet. So let's receive this help. Let's all receive. Let's all entrust and receive. God is so good. Why is it at the same dawn service we give the same worship to to receive help? And yet some people receive and some people don't. Because after four sermons, some people are like, that's it. But all things, whether they're good things or bad things, If we entrust everything, then he will take resp- responsibility. Otherwise, you have to take responsibility. So your business is ruined because you do it. Let's read together. Trust in Jehovah with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear Jehovah and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Honor Jehovah from your wealth and from the first of all your produce, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Amen. We all have to receive this help. Let's entrust everything and receive this help. Let's surely receive this help. So to receive this help, God saying, I'll help you at dawn. Please, let's live at peace. If you have a problem, instead of saying, oh no, oh no. You know, you say, Christ, take this. And then you live at peace. So all you have to do is stand still and watch Exodus chapter 14. Then the, then it will happen before your eyes. So God says to remember the Exodus. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. Whether it's the Egyptian army or the Red Sea, inside there will be pearls. Some people, they talk about their health, but it's when your spirit does well that you receive everything, then you have health. So you receive everything. 3 John, verse 2. So let's receive this and the whole day to receive blessings. The whole day, let's entrust. Only He is our guide. Only He is our guide. Let's entrust everything to Him. Even now, He says to entrust, He says, I'm your one and only guide. You know, you act like you're the guide and you're so smart. That's why you're ruined. From today, let's not worry. If we have a problem, to quit, to straight away entrust. If we entrust, If you have that habit of entrusting everything after three and a half years, when you say, Lord, he knows your thoughts, your heart. So as soon as you say, Lord, he just takes it away. But if you're like, Lord, I have this problem, I have this problem, and you're not letting go. You're saying it's such a headache. Look, I want to entrust to you, but so God he's trying to receive it but you keep pulling it away and you're like I've entrusted everything but and then you're like but and you take it again so you take away what you've entrusted God says I know your thoughts your actions please live at peace so the help at dawn the whole day he is our only guide there's no one but Christ is this our men Let's all receive this blessing. Let's be at peace. Let's have our disease healed. May we and our children and our business do well. We'll all do well. Let's all pray. Now let's entrust to our guide. But then you can't entrust without doing forced at repentance. By forced at repentance, you first have to have God. That's when you have the city. That's when he'll help you. So you have, first have to do four-step repentance. Whatever problem, do four-step repentance first, and then you entrust to your guide. So by four-step repentance, Christ accepts it, and then he becomes your guide, and then your desires will be fulfilled. Let's all pray. Father, because we can't realize the word properly, we thought that Christ was just to do four-step repentance, and then we didn't know where to entrust, and we held on to that burden by my strength and if, but if you do it you will receive trials it seems like you, if you do things by your strength then you'll spill everything you'll go to hell your children won't do well we have to entrust everything now we know that christ is our guide after doing four step repentance took straight away in trust and then to live by peace and by singing praises may we be Witnesses of the word, may we only receive 
prosperity. May we only receive the blessings of doing more well. May we receive the blessings for our children do more well. And may we become patriots. No matter what anyone says, may we obey the word. And may we receive the blessings that give you glory. We believe that we and our children will receive this. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's call upon the Lord three times. Lord. 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 Father. My Christ is o- my pride is only Christ. May we be forgiven by the blood of Christ and to go in Christ. After, to, after we receive hope, may we entrust to our guide, our children, our business, all things to entrust and to check and may we be witnesses of the workings may we we thank you that we're worthy to pray for our country and our people may we obey the word to pray for others and may we and our children be patriots